Good morning, guys. Figure it's a nice chilly day. Let's uh, take the girl out for a little bit before I do the rear end on her. Let's see what she can do. Got the car back inside the garage, checked the gun a little bit, put it on jack stands, and we're going to be pulling the rear diff out. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going to rebuild the clutch pack on this. It's an 8.8 .8 standard. Uh, no, I'm not changing the gears, if you guys are questioning that. Um, trying to break the 200 mile per hour mark on this car. Uh, I got there, it was almost there, but um, didn't record it at that time. I just want to see what she can do. but. Uh, as soon as I get to that point again, I'll record it and, uh, and I'll post that to you guys. Uh, the clutch pack. I have uh, the carbon discs. Carbon discs came on the 0304 Cobra. And yes, they do fit on here. I have the standard ones and I have the carbon discs ones. Difference between them in the packages is one comes with shims, the other one doesn't. 30 thousandths, 25 thousandths, and so on and so on. Okay, so we have two of the clutch packs here. One is M4700C, that is the standard, and then you have M4700B, and this is the carbon, oh my mistake, this is the carbon and this is the standard. Now, let me show you the difference between them. Okay, this one's for the 0304 Cobra, and these are the carbon 5 ones. Okay, and this here is our standard ones. Uh, take a look at this and of course friction fluid comes with it uh, here's the pack and here's the carbon disc pack okay so here's the difference this is the carbon fiber one which is meant for high horsepower and these are our standard ones well for an extra 60 bucks I'm gonna go with carbon fiber one and as we can see, my car is not a standard car anymore. <laughs> Far from it. Now, with this kit comes spring. This is not for the, this is not for the 28, so you're going to have to reuse your original one or get another one, but this one, I'm, if I'm correct, is for the, the 31 spline, and we cannot use this. It will not work with us. So, chuck this away unless you have a the aluminum 31 spline track lock from the 0304 Cobra. All right, let's start by taking off this wheel. And to remove the diff, you have to take it out to the passenger side. Which, once you take off the half shaft,
You gotta pull it out in this direction. Let's leave this here for now. All right, we're not gonna remove the brake caliper or anything. What we're gonna do is just take off the three bolts off the knuckle here, 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 and uh, we'll take the half shaft axle off also. This should be a 21 millimeter and this one should be an 18. So, just loosen it up and get it out. Don't want to use an impact on this right now. <laughs> we're gonna remove we're gonna remove this one which is a 24 millimeter And we're going to remove the one on the inner. We're going to take off the half shaft nut, which is about 35 millimeters. It's easy when you have the tools. All right, let's tip out the bolt. Hit the half shaft in a little bit. Just loosen it up. And don't hit this with a regular hammer. Use a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet. So you don't screw anything up. And especially on the bolts, if they're a little bit tight, you don't want to th screw up the threads. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a nut on here. Screw it on there a little bit. Use a dead blow hammer. And there you go. Now you don't screw up a threads on the bolt. So you get yourself a bucket over here. Just slide this out. Slide it right out. And put it on top of a bucket. And you can set that aside a little bit. Pry out the half shaft. There you go. Nice and easy. Control them up. Slide out the half shaft. And there you go. Set that aside. Disconnect the drive shaft. Mark it so you can put it back exactly the way it goes. Stuck a little piece of cardboard in between the drive shaft and the gas tank so it doesn't scrape. And make any marks on there. Okay, remove the rear brace from the differential. It's only four bolts. 
Okay, we loosen up the front differential bolts. And separate the other side axle. She's popped. There we go. That's better. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to fill this hole up right here where the half shaft is so no fluid leaks out of it. There we go. Nice and stuffed. And also what we want to do is loosen. Oops. I'm going to loosen this bolt up a little bit. There we go. She's done. And now we're going to have to lower it slowly and slide it out to the right a little bit. Okay, we have to take out that other side bolt. She's just stopping me from sliding it over. Let's do that. Okay. Let's see if we can get over there. Mm. I love this. Absolutely no room to get in there. Let's see if we can hit it out with this. There we go. She is out. She's loose. Got a little bit of a bad angle on here. Okay. Now, it's a, a little bit of a bad angle. Um, you know what? Get this jack over. This should help us. See, I have a transmission jack. One for loader ground. But I opted not to use it because it was buried with a whole bunch of other shit. Well, let's just try and hold this up just. Okay, let's see. Slide this side out. It's almost out. out to the side. She'll come out slowly. Just gonna take the last of this half shaft out. It's almost there.
not as easy as it looks. I've done this before, but the problem is my exhaust is in the way. This is what happens when you have a three inch exhaust. It's your custom make. Okay, she's almost out. Trying to see if we can slide her off just a little bit more. There we go. Finally, she broke free. Okay, slide it over to the right, and we slowly start dropping it. Got two jack stands here, so I'm gonna do this one and then the other slowly. There we go. That one's down. That one's down. Right, this one down. There we go. Pull that one down. Side by side. There we go. Lower this one down. Lower this one down. Little by little, she'll come right down. Take your time. There's no need to rush it. End up hurting yourself. And there we go. She's down. That's how we drop the rear end. Okay, now that you have the jack in the front of it, you have the jack in the back. Ah. Start pulling slowly and the other jack will follow it. Get this out of the way. There she is. Oh, she's gonna definitely need a little bit of cleaning. We'll grind her up to paint it red. Oh yeah, I got a new diff cover. And we're gonna end up pulling a full tilt buggy uh, adjustable bushings on that. All right, let's get to it. Then you crack it open like an egg. There you go. Okay, well, covers off. I'm gonna take off this 516 bolt. All right, we're gonna slide out the pin. Oh, nice and easy. Put that aside. Okay, let's get this spring out. Let's tap it. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. We could get it towards the tip and we could get it real close actually. Which one we got in there? Let's give it a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Let's see if we can slide this bitch out.
And there we go. Springs out. Nice and easy. Let's put that aside. Okay, let's spin it. Slide it out. Watch out the back one doesn't fall out. Let's take that one off first. With the washer. That's one. And that's two. And let's see which one we're going to take out first. Let's take this one out, right? Okay, take out the other side, well, this one came out a lot easier. Just gotta make sure all of the shims are out. There we go. That should be all of them. There you go. Okay, let's take a look what we got. Now I know back in the day they they changed the position of where the shims are supposed to go. All right, because in the 80s and the 90s they used to put the pad up against. Yes, they did. See what happens here? There's not a full contact on the outside of it. So we're going to be changing the position of that. That concludes that. All right, so what we're going to do is clamp them down already. We're going to measure the thickness on here. Let's see what that is. We're at 64. And the performance comes out to, should be about 65 thousandths of an inch. Let's take a look. There you go, 65. Standard is about 84. A little bit more of uh, performance is 64 and a half. And performance, 65. You might have a little pop. Of it going in and out but this is what's in all the Cobras 65 all three to all four all right now we're gonna put this uh, clutch pack in friction fluid and we'll have that sit overnight uh, now you're not gonna use an ADW90 that comes with the Thunderbird Super Coupe in the 0304 they actually call for 75 140 I use AMS oil so you guys, some guys like Royal Purple, Valvoline, hey, whatever floats your boat, go for it. But that's what I use. Okay, let's grab a Ziploc for the egg. Put the clutch pack inside. We have our friction modifier. Let's crack this open. All right. Pour this in there. Mm. Smells good. This is going to soak in overnight. I grab everything out of this. I believe that should be all of it. Throw this back on. Ooh, yeah. She's definitely got a smell to her. There we go. 
Right, so all sealed up. Try and squeeze put up a little air out of it. Hold on. Okay. Just to take an extra precaution, we're going to put it in another one. Two is better than one. So, see that. After she's done, I'm actually going to take the friction fluid, and I'm also going to put that. In, I'm going to reuse it and put that inside the differential also. They turn around and tell you, hey, uh, dispose of that, and then get a new friction modifier. Stuff is not cheap, all right. So, reuse it. Won't hurt anything. And we'll have that sit overnight. All right, well guys, she's all cleaned up, painted up. Use Duplicolor engine paint. Did a couple coats of that and uh, used the clear right after it. Actually took the cap because I had to replace the pinion seal anyway. Took the cap, wrapped up some tape around it and slid right in there. Made the job a whole lot easier. Don't get tape on the ins any paint on the inside, and she's good. We'll replace the seal. We'll pop a new clutch pack in her. Carbon fiber. Install new half shaft seals. All right, well, guys, I decided to change the pinion seal. There's a part number three six zero four, Advanced Auto Parts, and. Decided to also change the pinion flange. See, there's a little bit of a groove here. Well, you could f feel it with your nail. Just didn't trust it. So you know what? I said screw it for the la for 50 bucks. Let me get a brand new one from Ford Racing. Hey, they have it over at American Muscle. Or you could go to a Ford Racing site. They have it on there. I'll leave a link in the description. Let me just, let's get this out of here. Okay. And... There you go, brand new, 100 times better. And of course, gotta replace the crush sleeve. So, picked that up also at Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, Dorman, part number 81056. Of course, these people are not sponsoring me, I'm just letting you guys know where you can pick this stuff up. Let's uh, start replacing the sleeve. Seal and your pinion flange. Everything else is being replaced. Why not that? All right, let's start by putting in a new cross sleeve. Okay, let's uh, throw a little diff oil on there. All right, there we go. No. Beautiful. Slide that right in there. And again, same on the reversal. Goes in and out easily with a magnet. Okay, pop in the old bearing. Just inspect it, see if there's no grooves in it, no divots. And this one is still good. Again, Timken bearing. Don't use anything else. You're just asking for trouble. Slide that back inside there. Nice. And then, of course, don't forget your washer. This has to go back inside. And there we go. Now, what I like to do is pack a little grease in the groove so the spring doesn't pop out when we put this back in place. So, just a little bit of grease should be okay. Just fill it inside there. And you shouldn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. No 
big deal. And then on top of that, we'll take a little silicone, put it on the edge over here, so we can make a nice tight seal. And let's just put a little bead on here. That's it. Nice, quick, and easy. If you want, you could straighten it out just a little bit. There you go. All along the edge. That's it. Well, once she bottoms out, there's going to be a little bit of extra coming out of it. But that's all right. We'll wipe that down. Place the seal right on there. Now we got to use something the same diameter to pound this back in. Luckily, I still have this outside race from uh, the hub, from the rear of the T-Bird. So just going to place that on there. I'm just going to tap it down slowly. Nice and evenly. Take your time. Don't start pounding it like crazy. So you really don't want to pull this off and start all over again. Once you hear that different sound, like a pinging, you've bottomed out. So we'll just double check this. That's it. She's in. And as we said before, we'll just clean up the rest of the silicone here. Get that out of the way. There we go. I need to put a little bit on here, just in case. There we go. Just as a precaution. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, hey, it's your prerogative. But I got no problem doing this. All right, that's it. And as we push it down, she'll fill up into the grooves. And that's it. Beautiful. Beautiful, like a glove. That looks great. Yep, definitely looks great. Worth every penny. Put the nut back on. No, I didn't replace the nut. There's no one in. No one had one. So you know what? I'll reuse the same one. It's fine. All right, start tightening this down right away. 27 millimeter, just in case. Now, what we want to do is just get this snug on here and to take out the slack of the pinion and the pinion flange when they meet. Just want the crush washer just a touch. Much easier with an impact wrench. 
Impact on, sorry. Just keep checking, they're still playing it. And we'll go from there. <laughs> you don't want to go more than that. Because if you crush it too much, you're going to have to pull it off and put it in a new crush washer and start all over again. So stop a little bit before. All right, now this I'm gonna do on the floor, and I'm gonna do just like uh, like we were, that we don't have a clamp to hold this down or anything. We don't have a special tool. What I'm gonna do is just put some some bolts in it, not the original bolts from the hat drive shaft. You don't want to screw those up. Find another two set of bolts that fit in there, and we're gonna put this rag over that, so we don't damage the flange. And we'll take a crowbar or a long screwdriver, whatever you want. And we're going to start tightening up the nut by hand towards the end. I already uh, brought it down where I took the space from the, the pinion. And the pinion flange where there's not that much play, as you can see. Now I'm just tightening it up to uh, the preload spec. Now preload spec on here on a brand new crush sleeve is 1.8 to 3.2. So I'm going to try and meet in the middle at 2.5. So we'll go from there. Now to make this easier for yourself is just get it right inside there. Make sure that it doesn't touch. All right. And get this as close as possible. All right. And then just slowly try to preload it. There you go. All right. That's that. Let's take a look where we're at. We're at one. We're nowhere near that yet. Needs a little bit more. So. Let's keep doing it. Just take your time with it. Don't crank down on it because once you surpass that preload, you gotta take it all apart again. Put a new crush sleeve, new pinion uh, pinion seal, and it's just gonna be a big headache. Nobody wants to keep doing this. <clears throat> again, I could put this on the clamp, but a lot of guys don't have that. <clears throat> and this is how we're going to do it. Would be nice if you had a friend or a buddy to hold it for you. So she don't move. But it's definitely some good exercise. We're getting there. Nice and slow. Just take your time. We are about two and a half. That's perfect. Beautiful. And that is perfect. Well, these bolts actually came from a caliper. They fit perfectly. And that's it. Front flange is done. Nice. Okay. Alright guys. Now let's take the differential. Put it on top. Alright. What we're going to do is we're just going to put the stick on here because you know, have to twist this around. Well, move it around a little bit. So, let's get that on there. Okay. Beautiful. Let's 
see it? Nice. Let's spin this. Let's take it back to originally where we took it out. And what you want to do is, I have it written here left and right. Left, right. Marked it for top, marked it for bottom. All right, so that's where it is. We got our brand new pin. All right, so let's take our clutch pack. Put this right over here. That's been sitting for the day. And I put it in this case because, ooh, she reeks. Definitely smells. We have directions over here for the sh for the shims and the plates. So we're gonna start with the left side first. Left written over here. So let's just take a look at everything here. Plate, shim, plate, plate, shim, plate, shim, plate. Beautiful. Okay, still all in order. So what we're going to do is place it all on top of that, nice and easy. One more. There we go. Beautiful. She's in. That was fast. So let's slide this one in here. All right. Beautiful. She sees it properly. Nice. Now we gotta do the other side. So just double check. Plate, clutch, plate, plate, clutch, plate, clutch, shim. Beautiful. That is in order. Plate down. Let's grab this. That's it. She's in. And same thing goes for this side. Slide it right in. Slide it in, just take your time. Okay. So, take the top gear, slide it in, have it on the halfway mark in the back. Take the bottom gear, put it on the halfway mark on the back and spin it down and she should come straight into place where you can slide the pin right in. All right, now we're gonna take the top gear. We're gonna put the top gear back in. So, I'm gonna take a little bit of liquid on here and we gotta slide this back in. Okay, now let's go back to our original position. Right where the pin is, this is the top one, so. Okay, that one's back in. And then now I'm gonna go with the second one. Just gonna go a little over here. Make sure these are on here. All right, take this one, pop this one right in. Okay, should be dead even. And we just spin it to where it's just gotta go. If we could get to that. Okay, almost there, nice and easy, and voila, might be a little bit of a tight squeeze, but sure good in there, that's it, one shot, nice and hard, and just Tapping it in there. Just 
Just don't tap too much because you got to get that pin back in. Nice easy shot. Take the pin, slide it back in. If she gives you a little problem, just give it a little tap. She'll go right in. Yeah. Check everything. Okay. Nice and easy. Let's just straighten this out a little bit. Straighten out again. Now let's just tap it. And that is all she wrote. Slide the pin back in. And there she goes. All right, now we're going to type torque down the pin bolt. And I do the old German way. All right, good and tight. Click. There you go. Perfect. Now I'm busting your chops. It's going to be 15 to 30 foot pounds. Uh, we're going to go 25. Why not? Just chip that. All right, picked up a differential gasket, low blocker, that's what I'm putting in, uh, so I don't have to use any silicone to put it on, just bolt it in, you're all good to go, part number is LLR F880, if you want, and it actually gives you the diagram on uh, the pattern on how to torque it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so on. Now, I went with lube blocker because I have uh, the differential cover, which is Control Freak. It does not have the groove in it, like the original and the Ford Racing differential cover. So, that's why I went with this. And plus, it's a lot easier. Pop it in, no mess, and you're good to go. And also, I picked up a set of ARP bolts for this, which is 5 16 18 by 1 and a quarter. Uh, exact same length as the originals. But I figured, why not spend the extra buck and get the ARP bolts in. Alright, so let's install it. Take a look. Get that in there. Okay. Stop that off first. Grooves down on the gasket. So, start that off with the bolt on top. Let's get that in. Okay. Okay, now this case cover didn't come with the, the drain plug with the magnet in it. So, again, if it doesn't have a magnet in it, take it off and reuse the original one that you had from the car. Again, reuse it. You want that magnet in there. You want all the metal to get stuck on that magnet. You do not want a case cover with no magnets in it and all the shavings and everything just start piling around and then you're just asking for trouble. Now, in this case, the vent tube here on the other side does not have a metal plate covering it. So when the differential fluid starts moving around, it's going to make its way out. So what I ended up doing is I ended up getting a 5 16 uh, barb fitting with an actual tube vent with the hose, and that's it. And that solves that problem. And actually, it's funny because they actually have something like this for the newer Mustangs. They had, an, they had a problem with their axles where 
the fluid was just shooting out of the the axle vent. So this will work fine. Now just gotta torque them down. Okay, now when you torque these down, on here it says 28 to 38 foot pounds for the cover, but this is a cast iron. And on our service book, it says 25 to 35 foot-pounds. So I'm just going to go on the safe side, and I'm just going to do 32, which should be okay. Again, this is cast iron. This one is for aluminum. Okay, let's start with the first one. All right, now I'm gonna tighten up the bearing support bolts. Just, we'll do this nice and snug. All right, now they want these tightened on the bearing caps, five to 10 foot-pounds. My torque wrench goes 10, but I don't wanna go that much, so I'm going with the quarter. And five foot-pounds is about uh, 60 in pound, inch pounds. So let's go to 60. And we'll torque this down to 60 inch pounds. It's done. There you go. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it like this. Come back in about 10 minutes. Double check it. And then after she's good, we're going to torque these bolts down to about these nuts about 25 foot pounds. Okay, we gotta torque down these nuts. <laughs> these nuts. It's about 25 foot pounds. That's what it calls for, and that's what we're gonna go with. Beautiful. 25 to 30, we're gonna go with 25. That's that. And that's that. There you go. And that's it. It's done. Well guys, I hope you liked the video. Um, I got more content coming out. So if you can, just like, subscribe. That would be great. That would help out the channel and that would help me out to make more stuff like this. And I like to get a little bit more into detail on what I do. I don't like to cut, chop, cut, chop, cut, chop and there's still no information on how to do exactly what you want to do on a car like the rear differential. So on the next episode, we're going to be putting in the rear differential and also an aftermarket rear upper control arms including an aftermarket rear diff mount and we'll be doing that on the next episode again thank you guys like and subscribe